guys want to make a quick tutorial here on how to use gigabytes or engine to overclock your graphics cards uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure we have the latest version of gigabyte of course installed and to do that we want to go directly to their website I'll make sure I include this uh, below on the link uh, but here will be the Oris engine and of course this is the latest version 2019 and to download it we just want to click the continent we're on for our purposes it's America go ahead and download it click keep and you can see it's downloading but once it's done downloading go ahead and open the application and install it and open the app and it should look something like this when it first opens up even though I'm doing this on an RTX 2080 uh, regardless of what card you have the interface will be exactly the same first thing we we notice here at the top is where it says GPU boost uh, and that right there is the core clock and if we're doing a manually overclocking what we want to do is want to grab that slider and adjust it either to the right if we're going to overclock or move it to the left and you can see how it changes over here on the right hand side and once we have the desired core clock speed then click apply the same thing uh, we would do for the memory clock if we want to go ahead and, and increase it move it to the right and then to decrease again to the left hand side and once we have a desired core clock speed uh, memory clock go ahead and hit apply we also have control of the GPU voltage now if uh, this normally is a locked function as you can see there if you want to unlock it you would simply click it and then you have access to to move it if you're overclocking uh, one of the RTX series cards uh, in my opinion unless you're an expert really don't don't mess with the GPU voltage uh, as it can actually avoid the warranty on your card uh, and you can cause harm to the card if you're not sure what you're doing and also the new RTX cards are extremely extremely efficient uh, when it comes to voltage use so I would advise to just go ahead and, and leave that locked for now. We have our fan speed, which is normally set to auto, but if you want, you can click manual and then you can adjust the fan speed to any desired fixed speed. Once again, once you have the desired speed, you can hit apply or you can click customize and create a, a neat little you know fan here. On the bottom, you'll see the temperature and on the left hand side, you'll see the actual fan speed and percentage. So obviously as the temperature increases, you would want the fan speed to increase so you can make your own curve and then apply it. Lastly, here at the bottom, we have the power and temp. Uh, now I am going to advise that if you're manually overclocking, you're gonna want these set to your max. And the reason why I set that is these numbers are actually set by the manufacturer so they're actually safe limits and you can raise the uh, power limit and temp limit without actually voiding the warranty on your graphics card also uh, from our testing we haven't found any card <laughs> that doesn't like to have both of these set to max they tend to, to perform better uh, and give you higher frames per second uh, in gaming if you do have them set to max so those are there two that you'd want to set to max uh, in terms of features here on the bottom right you'll see where it says uh, semi-passive and you, you click that it, it goes to active fan and the difference is when you're running in semi-passive it takes the fans and it literally it runs them at a, a much lower quiet speed the the fans will actually come to a complete stop if the temperature drops but below I believe 40 degrees Celsius so if you put them on active the fans will be a little bit louder but they tend to you know do a little bit better job in, in keeping your, your card cool you know that that becomes a priority so if you don't mind just a, a little bit louder sound I, I normally leave it on on active as well uh, we have a monitoring feature here which we can use when we are manually overclocking the card to basically monitor one the core clock speed memory clock and then the GPU voltage if we were to unlock it and lastly, we have um, the LED control, which opens up to another application by Gigabyte, which I believe is called RGB Fusion, which allows you to control the RGB colors on your graphics card. So that, uh, that those are the main features of the Aorus engine if you were manually overclocking a card. Now, one of the new features uh, that we've received uh, is the NVIDIA OC scanner, which has been built into this application. And to use that, we would click on that button up here at the top that says auto scan. Now when we click that, you'll notice it opens up another screen here on the right and it begins scanning. It'll say scanning. Uh, that It'll take a little bit of time here, maybe about 10, 15 minutes, but it'll go all the way to 100%. Now once it's set, it will have then taken the, the core clock 
uh, curve it will have created one for you right using the NVIDIA OC scanner application and then you would simply just hit apply uh, to add that uh, but of course you would still have to adjust the memory clock because the NVIDIA OC scanner only controls the core clock you know that's the only thing that it's going to create the curve so I'm going to go ahead and, and cancel this out but uh, that is pretty much it as it goes for the uh, NVIDIA for the Gigabyte Aorus engine application. Uh, if you guys uh, have any questions, please feel free to leave comments in, below. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, please a quick thumbs up. Thank you guys.